This dragon here is a little bigger and a little more detailed than I realized I was getting myself into when we started this project. We started it in October of 2020, and, uh, and now we're standing in front of a finished 55-foot steel Game of Thrones dragon. I never knew what Game of Thrones was when this project started, so I went home and uh, printed some pictures to have as reference pictures while I was constructing him, and that's all we went off of. The owner liked the pose where Drogon lands on the wall of a Colosseum, and he's shooting fire. You know, the owner asked while we were starting construction if I could um, make it shoot fire, and I thought, well, it's Drogon, he's gotta shoot fire. It's all done with a remote, whoop. It's all done with a remote key fob, and this key fob will turn on the uh, pilot lights, and then if you hit the trunk button, uh, that'll shoot fire. Hold on. We didn't really have a budget. I was just, you know, putting metal into him uh, until I was finished. So I think I spent in, in and around $50,000 Canadian in uh, steel material for him. Total time to make him was about 16 months of actual solid work. And that's uh, several people working on him. Well, once Drogon's uh, fully assembled on site, from head to tail, and his tail goes up about 30 feet in the air, which is, I can't wait to see it. Uh, so he's about 55 feet long from head to tail. Now if his wings were to be outstretched, he'd have about a 100 foot wingspan. But because of the pose he's in and he's crawling on his wings, uh, it's about a 40 foot uh, wingspan. And he weighs approximately 15,000 pounds in steel. I don't work with computers or CNC tables or anything like that. Um, if it's a subject that is out there, you know, whether it be a T-Rex or a Drogon or a, a bird or an eagle, whatever I'm building, I'll just take some uh, photographs and print some photographs, usually off of Google for reference pictures, and then I, I just build by eye. So that's, that's how I work. I started with his lips. So the lips of his mouth and the gums of his mouth uh, framed out the opening for his mouth. Then I, it allowed me to build um, one layer for the lips, another layer for the gums and start layering my way into his mouth. Um, then I built the, the interior of his mouth and, uh, and the tongue area and his teeth and just kind of worked my way out from that. All of these horns are uh, half inch round bar and they were uh, bent. I have a hole in my big fab table, I just have a hole in it. And I take the round bar and I just bend it little bit by little bit, inch by inch to get a nice curve in them. And then once I had a cone, I welded the end, had this all welded to the ring, and then I just filled all the hollows of the round bar with welding. And in some areas, I didn't fill it all the way because I actually liked the texture of the round bar coming through the welding and it give it kind of a bony feel, a bony look to it. And then in here, there's two pieces of round bar to make the cone or the triangle shape. Then I shaped sheet metal, just 18 gauge sheet metal over top of each spike. And then I textured it all with rows and rows and rows of welding. He had a few different size teeth and they have all these curves and different angles to them, but they were very much, um, needle-like uh, in, in all the reference pictures I looked at. They're just made out of round bar. I, uh, I sharpened a bunch of round bar and bent them in, in different sizes and different angles. And They look pretty vicious and they are pretty sharp. So. 